Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And in this video, we're going to cover a fierce wireless article. And I wanted to speak on this because I think this is not going to work. This is just the wrong play from Verizon. So Verizon defends pricey plans in 5G world. So they are more expensive. They're just priced more expensive than AT&T and, and T-Mobile, although not by much, but they are still priced and perceived to be the most expensive carrier in the United States. Now, T-Mobile, they have additional discounts that you can attach to the plan. So you could even get a more reasonable cheaper rate with them versus Verizon. And then AT&T, you can get additional discounts as well to also lower your rate, which is already cheaper than what Verizon offers at this point in time. Now, Verizon is at the recent quarterly earnings. They're talking about, oh, we're seeing this percentage that leads us to believe that the offerings are working or this higher percentage is, is coming in now towards the end and you know, we won't see that reflect in the fourth quarter, but maybe in Q1. No, that's that's not going to work. Like I said, in an environment, if you have all the best NBA players on one team, you still have to be competitive to what's out there in order to win. You can't just say I have the best players and if they don't compete, they're going to win. That's not how it works. And it's the same here. Verizon may have the more premium network, the larger network, but they are going to have to compete. And why do they have to compete? Because of T-Mobile. And the reason I say T-Mobile is because AT&T has already been on somewhat of a level playing field, right? They've, they've competed in enterprise. They got, they got some share there. They, they've been the other go-to, the second player in the rural environment. And AT&T has similar amounts of money. T-Mobile is the one Verizon is really going to have to keep an eye out on to cut into additional share that AT&T may not take, right? And that's the customer that's looking for a cheaper option. So as T-Mobile moves into these rural areas where Verizon and AT&T for the longest have been swapping back and forth and these customers have been wanting T-Mobile, they, they see the national advertising, they want a cheaper cost, those customers are likely immediately to switch to T-Mobile as soon as they bring new services and retail lo uh, distribution locations out to these rural parts. Now I'm not disregard I'm not disregarding that T-Mobile had didn't have coverage there for 20 years or more depending, right? But a new option is a new option and that's what the consumer is going to look at. And as soon as T-Mobile gets there with new service, of course they're going to be loud. That's just who they are. So Verizon trying to defend their pricey plans in the 5G world is not going to work. And that's not based on just right now what they're currently seeing. I'm already see I'm already speaking of a future outlook. T-Mobile expanding more coverage into area that they didn't exist in. So they come in with cheaper pricing when Verizon is sitting there defending their higher pricing. The consumer will eventually choose and it will be noticed in the numbers. And we're already seeing it in the numbers now. In the future, we're going to see that even more. Right? Verizon recently had a profit drop of 23%. If they continue losing at that clip in the future, we could see lower, lowering of ARPU, lowering of ARPA. We could potentially start seeing fixed wireless access ads leaving. That could be the end result of T-Mobile further accelerating their build at the current strategy. Remember, T-Mobile has two times less debt. They don't pay dividend. So they're going to accelerate their free cash flow very quickly. Within this next year, T-Mobile will probably be at a 12 to $13 billion free cash flow that's going to accelerate to about $16, $17 billion by 2026. That's going to be massive. That's going to give them insane leverage to, to be the most flexible that they will ever be at that time. So that's when they can strategize new plans, new, uh, new specific capex for a millimeter wave build for fixed wireless access, whatever the case may be. And that's what Verizon has to look out for. Not in the right now, but in the future planning. So the fact that they are defending their current high prices at this point in time and letting the brand image slip, in my opinion, is the bad part. That's what Hans is not, is not shifting and realizing. They have to change the, the strategy now in order to pick the brand back up. That takes, that takes time. 
You can't just in the middle of next year drop your price and then expect to have a be better quarter the next quarter. No, you're going to have to follow up with marketing. You're going to have to get that back into the consumer mindset that the, that the perception is changing, that Verizon is now cheaper. All of that takes time. You can't just do that overnight. So that's what Hans and his team have to realize as T-Mobile starts really cutting. And like I said, T-Mobile hasn't even hit their peak yet. T-Mobile is going to hit a peak when, when they get more of that rural coverage going and they know what it's going to take. They're going to hit peak on an enterprise share, rural share, broadband share. All of that is going to go to them. And with that, with that peak, that's what's really going to, in my opinion, shock Verizon. And they haven't seen that yet. So make sure you guys stay tuned to the channel for more. Leave all your comments in the comment section down below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, follow my social media outlets. This is Tyrone with Tech Life. See y'all in the next one. Peace.